When I put the two parts of the pelvis together that we had, this part of the pelvis has pressed so hard and so completely into this one that it caused it to be broken into a series of individual pieces which were then fused together in later fossilization. After Lucy died, some of her bones lying in the mud must have been crushed or broken, perhaps by animals browsing at the lake shore. Uh, this has caused the two bones, in fact, to fit together so well that they are in an anatomically impossible position. The perfect fit was an illusion that made Lucy's hip bone seem to flare out like a chimp's. But all was not lost. Lovejoy decided he could restore the pelvis to its natural shape. He didn't want to tamper with the original, so he made a copy in plaster. He cut the damaged pieces out and put them back together the way they were before Lucy died. It was a tricky job, but after taking the kink out of the pelvis, it all fit together perfectly, like a three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle. As a result, the angle of the hip looks nothing like a chimp's, but a lot like ours. Anatomically, at least, Lucy could stand like a human. The case for our earliest ancestor walking upright was growing stronger, and Lucy wasn't the only evidence. Around the same time, another remarkable fossil was found by a team working in Tanzania, led by Mary Leakey. It was a mysterious footprint. Three and a half million years ago, a volcano erupted a thousand miles from Hadar near a place called Lytoli in Tanzania. Over the weeks, it threw tons of ash into the air that repeatedly blanketed the landscape. By a stroke of good fortune, the eruption took place at the beginning of the rainy season. As the rain set in, the ash became muddy and covered with animal prints. A bird picked its way across the ground, followed by a scurrying African hare. Then as time passed, another creature arrived that left prints we would all recognize. Eventually, all these prints were covered by ash from another eruption and preserved forever as they hardened into rock. Three and a half million years later, Mary Leakey's expedition uncovered this trail. There were footprints from at least two individuals, apparently walking side by side. The unusual chemistry of the volcanic ash was like plaster, preserving the prints as a series of detailed molds and casts in solid rock. Evidence like this would delight a forensic scientist like Owen Lovejoy. The analysis of footprints from a crime scene can be vital in identifying a suspect. How different were those ancient footprints in Lytoli from ones like these? There's no better evidence than that provided by a footprint. That's what makes the Lytoli print so exciting, because they give us a direct record of how our ancestors walked almost four million years ago. When we compare the Lytoli print to that of a chimpanzee, the difference is immediately obvious. The chimpanzee, which is a quadruped, but occasionally a biped, 
still has a free gray toe, and that gray toe extends out away from the foot and leaves a very distinct mark. On the other hand, when we compare the Lytoli print to that of a, a crime scene human print, they're virtually indistinguishable. The gray toe is in line with the rest of the toes, and what this has done in the human and the Lytoli print is to create an arch, and that's a hallmark of typical modern upright locomotion because the arch is an energy absorber and that's the kind of fine tuning that you would expect in a biped that had been that way for a very long period of time. So a picture of Lucy and her kind begins to emerge. They were strong walkers. Like us, they could keep going all day long, probably in search of food. But how human-like were they in other ways? Had they begun to develop a human-sized brain to go with their human walk? Lucy couldn't help us there. Her skull was almost entirely missing. So knowing the exact size of Lucy's brain was the crucial bit of missing evidence. But from the few skull fragments we had, it looked surprisingly small. What we needed was a complete skull. Finding one has always been our goal. On the second day of this expedition, I'd gone out to search a remote part of the valley alone when I found tantalizing fragments of a skeleton. I rushed back to camp and alerted the team. We decided to drop everything, pack our gear, and set out on the dusty drive to search for more. fragments I'd found, a piece of skull, an arm bone, and some finger bones, belonged to a human ancestor. Fragments found together like this are so rare that we needed everyone's help. We were excited, but tense. Would we find the rest of this ancestor? Mike, are you going to um, continue with uh, probably the fourth one? Four. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Bill, are you going to continue here? Yeah. Yeah, I'll be working on this there. Okay. Yeah, hold it at the 50 centimeter mark. Okay. okay. I'm on 50. All right. That's 8 centimeters left. When we arrived, we mapped out the area where I'd found a small piece of arm bone and a tiny fragment of skull that were freshly broken. That meant they hadn't been on the surface long. There was a chance that the rest of the arm bone and maybe even more of the skull were still buried in the hillside. Because they're so delicate, complete skulls hardly ever survive. dig had to be conducted with meticulous care. The stakes were high. We hoped we were about to uncover another Lucy, maybe even more complete. The work requires extraordinary concentration. We hardly exchange a word. There's a lot of ground to cover, but we try to make sure nothing escapes our attention. All the spoil is screened with an expert eye to double check for any minuscule fragments. But it's mostly just dirt.
After a week of painstaking and exhausting digging, we hadn't found anything. Our initial optimism was flagging. Where were the bones? Because if, if the skull had eroded out, it, it goes into so many pieces, and we've not found a single fragment. Mm -hmm. I mean, not, there, not nothing. That's really serious. And, there, and I, would, I would doubt very seriously that... Setbacks and fruitless days are all part and parcel yeah. of an excavation. All we can do is return each day and keep searching. After a week, we sent part of the team off to search in another location, but a few of us stayed on. Any fragment raises our hopes, because it may be part of the puzzle. Yeah, it's got a bit of morphology, Bill. It's got uh, a bit of morphology on it. Look at this. I'm not sure what it is, but it uh, looks like a diagnostic piece of bone. Oh, God, the not the right preservation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the end of it. Another week passed, and we'd found a few fragments, but no sign of any skull. But on an expedition, you can never be sure what will happen next. I clearly remember that evening. At dusk, I returned to camp. The moment I arrived, I could tell that something was up.